I'm Dr. David Cooper. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Saskatchewan and a Canada Research Chair in Synchrotron Bone Imaging. Um, working with the Fedoric Centre, I'm working with a team of four Canada Research Chairs, including myself, uh, Dr. Dean Chapman, Dr. Graham George, and Dr. Ingrid Pickering. And we're studying the uptake of uh, elements into the skeleton. We're interested in bone, bone formation, and more specifically, the treatment of bone cancers. So treating bone cancers often involves using bone targeting drugs. And we're using the power of the synchrotron to have improved images to study where these things actually go in the body. Our, our project involves a collaboration with researchers at the University of Alberta. We have two partners there, Dr. Mike Doschak, who's in pharmacy, and Dr. John Duke, who's at the Slowpoke Nuclear Reactor. Uh, and capitalizing on their expertise, we're able to very precisely characterize the location of these materials in some samples, but also to, to synthesize some of these um, mock drugs that we're studying here at the synchrotron. Well, I think nuclear imaging techniques and nuclear um, treatment techniques with radionuclides are very valuable tools in fighting cancer. And obviously, cancer is taking an uh, increasing toll on our aging population. The use of the synchrotron and combining this uh, to examine this technique, I think, is particularly compelling because it will provide us unique information about exactly where these materials are going in the skeleton. So nuclear techniques are extremely sensitive, but they're imprecise. So you can detect small amounts of material, but not with great spatial acuity. The synchrotron provides that spatial acuity even in stable elements and so combining the two we gain far more information than we would alone. Well we hope that we can inform the use of, of these bone-seeking uh, elements, these bone-seeking radionuclides, to shift them into more common use. Currently they're just used in palliative care and they carry certain risks and the more we learn about these materials the more potential we have to develop drugs that may actually save lives rather than make lives more comfortable at the end.